All right, what's going on, guys? First, uh, welcome back. I was mostly streaming a ton over the bingo. Didn't really put out any videos, but we're back. Our team ended up getting second place in the bingo, so that was really awesome. I believe I got a 750 mil split on top of all of the money I made. I think when everything was said and done, I made like 7.8 bill. So I made a disgusting amount of money, but... Yeah, that's what I've been up to the last couple weeks. You can expect a stream highlights to come out relatively soon. Like, probably two or three videos, I'm not sure. But, yeah, that's what I've been up to. But we're back, and we are doing another PVM Fundamentals Guide today. So, today we're going to be talking about planning your movement and what you can do to make moving around a little bit easier for yourself. And the place we're going to try this at is Hard Mode Zuck. Now, one of the big modifiers to hard mode Zuck over normal mode Zuck is that Zuck will summon fire lines every so often that do a massive amount of typos damage. I think if you stand in it, even if you're power bursted, like you'll just die. So you don't want to stand in it. Now, when I watch people kill hard mode Zuck, I see them do a lot of crazy movements. They will, you know, dive away. They'll surge and it'll mess up a lot of their lures and stuff like that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to think about how we can plan our movements in order to make less drastic movements and still keep everything where we want to keep it. This is going to be most important for Zuck because this is one of the only PVM challenges where you actually need to lower enemies to a certain area. But limiting your movement to only necessary movements is going to be something that you want to do anyways. So we're going to summon a Hellhound. We'll pot up. And we'll get into a kill. I'll put on penance just because I don't want to worry about prayer. I'm not going to finish the whole kill. I'm just going to do the first couple waves so I can go over what I'm thinking about. Okay, we're going to summon all of our guys. We're just going to kill these first guys. And one thing that you should know is that the fire line is always going to come from across the arena to, to you. So the furthest point from the arena is over here. So I'm angling my camera over here so I can see where the fire lines are coming from. And because I know it's coming from this side, that means if I'm going to dodge it, I only need to move left or right. So here, we're just killing everything. I'm still thinking about it. Again, it's trying to come from the furthest point, so it's probably coming from over here. So that's just what I'm thinking about. So it came from over here instead. So we're just going to move three or four squares this way. And you see, we didn't make any drastic movements, and we're all good here. Obviously, I'm taking a bit of damage, but that's okay. So yeah, like you can see by just adjusting my my movements or by moving more sparingly and having more calculated movements, I'm really not uh I don't have to do that that much to get the enemies where I want them to be. So here I'm going to do a big lore to keep everything together here. So it came diagonally. So we're just moving a couple of squares and we dodged it and everything is still where we want it to be, which is really good. So yeah, we're just going to go up to the first challenge wave because uh, we should be seeing another fire wave here. But yeah, again, the whole point of this is just to show that you can restrict your movement pretty heavily and still get really good results by just knowing what's going to happen next and by planning around it. We're going to death mark this guy and stun him. Also, this is a new lore that I'm going to show you guys in a new video coming up soon, so be on the lookout for that. Oh, 
or just killing this ranger. We bloated him. I'm going to use a finger of death just, just in case. Now we're going to head over here diagonally. So now the fire line's coming from here or here. So I'm just going to wait for it to come. Okay, so it came diagonally. So I'm just going to move three or four squares this way. And we dodge it. We take a little bit of damage from, from these guys. But because we didn't do anything crazy like surging out here, none of these guys are hitting us. Now we'll just hit Zuck. We're probably not going to finish this challenge first try, but that's fine. Again, that's not really the point of this video. The point isn't to actually finish the challenge. The point is just how we can use our movement and how we can use cleaner movement to get the results that we want to see. So I should have to deal with another fire line. So right now I'm just thinking, okay, because of where I'm standing now, fire line's coming from one of these two points. I'll go down here because of where I'm standing now, it's coming from one of these two points. So it's coming from here, so I'm just going to move this way a couple squares. And you see, like, because of the way that I moved, even though I did have to dodge the fire line so I couldn't just sit still, everything is still where I left it. So now we just go over here. We'll resummon all of our guys. And yeah, that is pretty much it. So here it's coming from one of these two places. So I'm just going to move like two squares this way. And I dodge it. And then we're just going to do the, the first challenge. Yeah, so nothing crazy there. Just use threads on these other two or on the two opposing ones. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Again, the goal of this is more to get you guys thinking about where you need to dodge and where the dodgeable things are coming from. So to summarize what we were doing, I was angling my camera towards where the fire lines were coming from so I could still see the whole map, but more importantly, I could see where the fire was coming from. And then when it actually came, because I knew where it was coming from and I knew I didn't need to move that much, I was able to dodge the fire lines without breaking any of my lures, which is incredibly important, especially once you start speed killing Zuck or once you start killing him relatively quickly, because something that's gonna come out in a couple of days is a speed kill guide for Zuck. And that is going to use this technique Pretty much exclusively. What a lot of people don't know is that as you get more and more familiar with Zuck, it stops being like a gear check and it starts being a movement check. Where having a very clean and very precise movements is how you're going to get faster and faster kills. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. The next video is also going to take place at Zuck. It's going to focus on how you can use surge and dive to position yourself where you want to position yourself. So you can expect that to come out tomorrow. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.